Hey gang, Jamie Aston. Bree and I caught a lot of fish last night, and uh, we didn't get home till about 2.30 a.m. I didn't clean them. So we're gonna go get our fish, and it's a little warm outside. And I was originally thinking about cleaning the fish out here, but it's just hot. Um, from the light well to the cooler last night, and here we are. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these out, and we're gonna clean them in the kitchen. All right, so what we have, we have the fish in the sink, and what I like to do is de-slime them, rinse them off a good bit. So I'll uh, put the fish in here, I'll just kind of run my hands along them like that, because when they've been sitting on the ice or what have you, they'll get real slimy, and they clean them sometimes, uh, slippery. All right, so some of the supplies I like to use are, I like to use a strainer. Because when I get my clean fillets, I'll put them in the strainer and they'll be in the sink where the fish now are. Uh, in fact, we'll take this bucket. This is our garbage bucket. Uh, put it inside the trash can for now, like that. Uh, put that right there. And when the fish is all nice and clean, they're going to go in this basket. Because we're going to go right to cooking, seasoning, all that type of stuff like that. So, um, I have two of these. You can see I've never used them. I do have a couple in Arkansas. I use them for bigger fish. For a lot of times, for fish I catch, I don't use them. Um, it does make it easier to grip the fish when you want to run that fillet through them. But I doubt we'll use that today. Just showing it. My trusty fillet knife. We have a really big crappie, so we're going to be using. Might use this puppy on it. And most importantly, are these kitchen shears. Um, I love them when I'm uh, cleaning fish, right through the bone, right through the rib, what have you I need to do. I'll use those puppies. So, all right, here's my biggest one of the night right here. See this knife? It'll still work on it. Where's my big blue? I can't find it. Right here. It's the one I have for uh, bigger fish and everything. Sometimes I still like to use my little one though because uh, the angle. I don't use this one a lot, so I haven't used it this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. One of the things about for me filleting the fish that's fun is it's like when I. Uh, do crab meat, uh, shrimp, anything I do, I try to be as efficient, efficient as I can. Some people just go for broke and they just go through and they don't care. For me, I try to see if I can't get as much meat or as close or as something. It's always a little game I'm playing. And so, already, this thing is a big old meaty fillet right here, which is nice and awesome. See, with it being bigger, we might be able to fall along that rib line and get a little bit more. It wasn't too fat on the ribs, though, anyhow, so, you know, yeah, that's where we're going to break it right there. That's a big, nice piece right there. Yes. You know, there's still some meat on there that... Wouldn't want to, you know, person get rid of. Here's a product. Now, one of the best ways to scale a fish is the spoon. You can't beat the spoon. I mean, we'll demonstrate both actually. Um, here's a product that was given to me from a uh, tackle factory. Not tackle factory. Uh, um, the maker of the G minnow trap. Um, it might be tackle factory. I have to look it up. But uh, you, you take this, it's called the Magic Fish Scaler. That's all you need to know. It really works. So I'm going to do a comparison real quick. Here I am with the spoon. Now, number one with the spoon, you got to hold the fish a certain way. You want to start the tail, and you just kind of peel back. Look at that. If you go slow, you know, a lot of people, like, they don't want to clean scale fish in the house. 
you know, because they're going to get scales everywhere. I'm not even going like slow, like I'm scared and have to be meticulous. I'm just raking backwards like that. I mean, no big deal. That is the spoon right there. And I'll clean up like that. That is the spoon. Let's do the other side. Whole oh, sheet of scales right there. No need to have scales flying everywhere. And that's how I was even taught though. Even though they gave us a spoon, I saw everybody flicking scales, going back and forth, raking like that on the fish. And even still, I'll see people doing that sometimes. Like, no, 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 don't do that. You don't have to do that. Just take it back. One of the worst things you can use is the knife. But I know why people use the knife. They use the knife because they don't want to have to change tools. So there is that. Here's this crappie right here. So we're going to use a magic fish scale right now. It's got all these little teeth. All you got to do is massage it. But I'll just do the same thing back. Just like so. Now the thing and beauty behind the magic fish scaler is that nope, it doesn't have scales flying everywhere. Uh, like you might think. But it's a little faster. Because all those little teeth, I don't have to be as meticulous. And since it has such a wide base, until it keeps the scales from flying everywhere. There's one. Two. Now that's one thing I usually do too. I'll go ahead and cut through that. There. There's way no blood shooting back at me from the spine. Go ahead and just cut through that spine. There we go. That was a female. So yeah. Um, see the male, they'll have these little, um, I call it, oh you can't see it on me anymore. I call it loins. But you see two little tubes. Not loins, but you know, probably testes or something like that on the inside of them, right there in the females, you'll see a little orange sack. Final thing I'll do with these, I'm going to do it to them first. So I'll take my finger and run it alongside the rib cage and pull out any other little nasty, any parts of the intro that we don't want. Bring this puppy out and we're going to go ahead and just go to work. I don't keep fingernails at all, so um, I just use a little bit I have, which I just cut my nails, so I don't have any. I might have to use that little gripper. I like to pinch down on the skin at the tail part, and uh, I should use the bigger knife for this fillet right here. That's where it comes in handy, because this uh, the skin is rather long, and you want that knife to flex. So we got one fillet. I'm going to show you a third process I do to it. So because we're not done. All because we got that meat off. Some people are done right there at that moment. I got to show you something. You want your fish to taste better than good. We might have to use the gripper. We'll go ahead and use the gripper. I don't have enough down there. Just to it was the deformed fish. There we go. Right there. All right, and done. All right. So the final step is for these fish. Let me just show you. Everywhere where you see red, that's what makes fish taste bad. That's the gamiest part of the fish. So, what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna show you how to take that out. All right, so what we do right here is, I just take a, just start going at a V. Done. You could take a little bit of that fat off, but that's not going to leave much. 
that's not going to give you too much of a taste. It's the long strip that's going along the spine that has the most of the gamey flavor. There are only a few things in life I enjoy killing. Flies are at the top of the list. <laughs> I don't even like to kill spiders or ants. You know, I'll save a spider. Many times, I will never save a fly or a mosquito. Ants, I understand it. You know, animals, like a deer. I'm still waiting to do my first. It's gonna be this year, hopefully, but I under, you know, I appreciate its life. I'm not gonna say I just want it. I enjoy killing it. Fish, I don't enjoy killing fish. I love to eat fish and I appreciate the fish's life and things like that. So that's why it's important that when I do take it home, I get as much as I can and I'm gonna enjoy eating that. So our next step is we're gonna be seasoning it up and putting a cornmeal jacket on these puppies. So stay tuned for that video. See, number one, I have some of these peppers dry. These are, you know, last year's peppers, things like that. So not only will I dry them, but check this side. This is a special little roux. So, um, yeah, bink spice and salt. So we're gonna be putting this on our fish, along with another secret ingredient I'm not gonna reveal. Because, uh, you know, it's been known that my fish is some of the best ever. That's what people say. I just don't catch these fish, people. I know how to throw down. So, uh, yeah. Alright, gang, we're in the outdoor kitchen now. Um, pretty much through summer and for about year round. I pick outdoors. I have my grills out here. Two of them and or three. And uh, when I'm cooking outside, I'll either bring a burner. You all have seen that in previous videos. Or we'll use these. What we're using today, these are called fry daddies. And uh, they're one of the best ways to fry fish. Fry daddy is one of the easiest ways to fry fish, french fries, other components. There's no temperature gauge or anything like that. Uh, you just wait for it to get hot. And you fry it. And it comes out. Uh, the food is very consistent. Very easy to use. I recommend you all get one of these if you don't have one. I also have the uh, Bass Pro Shops uh, propane fryer. I use a lot of propane for my grills and things like that. Um, have, obviously, I haven't used it yet. I put it together. It's ready to go. I almost used it for this video, but you know, and it would have handled probably all the fish. But um, I know the consistency with these, so I don't want to try this out while I do a video with you all. All right, so. The grease is getting hot. I'm going to show you all what we have. Number one, we have french fries. What is the onion here for, Jamie? When I fry french fries and fish, as you will see, one of my secrets is to fry onion inside with the fish and the grease. The onion gives its own flavor as it cooks. So that's a secret for you all. Other than that, it's some of my spices and seasoning. Same with my fish. This is some of my spices. I'm not going to tell you all my recipe, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, salt and pepper <laughs> and what other spices you want. But there are also onions inside of it. The fish is going to be dipped into cornmeal. And there it is right there. One of my favorite seasonings or uh, fish fry is the Louisiana or Louisiana fish fry, as we call it back home. Louisiana. All right. Now, here's the grease. That looks pretty hot. Right, so one of the ways you can tell if the grease is ready, you take a pinch of cornmeal. You see that how it fries? That's ready to go. That's ready to go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, number one, we just had the French fries and the fish in water. Now they've been they've had an opportunity to sit, but you have hot grease, and if your contents are not dry, you know let them rest for a little while. That water is gonna you know, start popping and cracking. That's why, why grease pops and cracks. So, uh, our uh, food when you put it inside of it. So we're gonna put our fries in. Not a whole lot popping and cracking because it's not that wet. Now it comes to the fries you wanna cook, and the fish too. When it floats up, it's ready to come out. What you don't wanna do is overcrowd your basket. Just take your time. 
Also, the more you put it in there, you're dropping the temperature down, so it's going to slow it down. So we're going to cook these whole crappie first, separately. We're going to take it, then dip it into the cornmeal. This is what they call a cornmeal jacket. Completely surround it, drop that puppy in. Both of these should fit, they're small enough. You put them in there a few seconds after one another, then they won't stick together. But if you throw everything on top of each other, then you're going to have pieces stuck together. So you want to just give it a moment so it can separate. All right, we're going to go ahead and take our fish. The fried potatoes not as important to make sure they come out perfect. Look at that puppy right there. Oh man, it looks like a good brim. It's beautiful. I should have gone ground fishing today, but I'm shooting this video. <laughs> All right. Oh, these are looking delicious. Let's be honest, people. That would be a beautiful meal right there for somebody. <laughs> Two fish and one potato. That's what you could do right there, real quick and easy. But wait, there is more, lots more. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some more potatoes in this grease right here. all of them in there. All right, now let's get this copy going. Let's get this show on the road. These are all the fillets. One, again, don't overcrowd your basket. Now what I do a lot of times, I, and I didn't do it for you all this time, I never have fish strips this big. So after this batch, we're gonna cut them. I'll show you what I usually do. Let's just get the nuggets right now. I'm not a big fan of eating a big piece. I know at restaurants, they say you get two large pieces. I don't like that. I usually cut mine fillets in half and I use it, usually use a knife so everything is nice and uh, sliced you know but we're just going to use these shears because we already have it all in the bowl make, make perfect little sizes where you can easily get a good little portion especially when you're freezing you can already have your meals prepared, ready to go. Like this one has six or eight pieces in there. And so you can always pull out a Ziploc bag and know exactly how many Ziploc bags to pull out, depending on how many people you're feeding. Here we are, nice and golden, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's a mix between, for me, I like, uh, there's a specific size I like between thin, crispy, and stuff like that. I fill this basket up, so it's taking a little bit longer on these fries in this bag, so we're gonna let those finish right there. Now, one thing that I do is I keep my fish and fries and stuff separately. 
some people use the same grease, fish, chicken, all that type of stuff. I had an event where someone did that when they were cooking for me and I hated it. <laughs> you don't do that. If anything, you start to cook with the least batter first, which are like the fries. And then you go for your fries and then you go to something else. It's really hard to mix something that's flour based and cornmeal based together. You don't do that. You just you don't do that. Don't do that. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Yes, it is. Now, we use a, a Louisiana or Louisiana fish fry for this batch. Well, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> because not too long ago, we ran out and um, I made my own. All it is, you just take some cornmeal. You can put a little flour, but for me, I don't like a lot of flour in my fish fry. So I might just have just a small amount or you can just use straight cornmeal. Um, now some people like flour, fish and things like that. If I'm going to use flour for my fish that's where I'm going to go to a wet batter. But right now this is more of a dry cornmeal jacket. You want a cornmeal jacket people. So if you're going to make your own you don't have to have this stuff right here. There is uh, one that's in the yellow package. I think it's like lemon or something. Don't get that one. If you look at the ingredients, it's flour based, uh, or it's a lot of corn flour, or just whatever wheat flour. Get the blue one. This is definitely more cornmeal based. Nice golden color. And what we have is a mix of fries and chips. I originally was going to uh, do chips, fish chips, really. And uh, then I decided to make some fries. So. We'll let some of those go on the bottom, brown up just a little bit more, and our fish ready to come out. You can't say these nuggets don't look good. That's why you make it that size. Easy for anyone just to grab and just run and eat. Run and gun. Look at that. We'll go ahead and take those out too. And we'll take over that grease. Last batch going in.
love to cook outside, you know, for two reasons. Number one, I love being outside. Number two is that, like today, it was a really hot day. You don't want to have all of this heat going on inside the house, nor do you want the smells from certain things. So, um, I can cook out here, clean up out here, and leave the inside clean like it was never touched. So, um, we're going to be eating outside today as well, so I'm going to be bringing out some paperware and things like that that's easy to clean up. <laughs> it's like a vacation in your backyard. Alright gang, we're done. Let's check it out. Now, I showed you all just what, how to catch the fish. I showed you how to clean it. I showed you how if we had two people doing it, how we would tag team and get it done right. We have our potatoes. We have our crappie fillets. We have whole crappie just like we do bluegill. We have some coleslaw. We have some sweet tea. Glasses and cups. Now, you all didn't help me catch the fish. You didn't help me clean the fish. And you definitely didn't help me cook the fish. So I had to go find two old random strangers hanging about, looking hungry. In fact, my dog found them. So we invited them over. Hello. These are some brothers hey, and sisters that was hanging around. Hey, James, man. Uh-oh. This is my niece, and, <laughs> my niece and my nephews came over here swimming. And then they just got some surprise fish that they didn't help catch, clean, or cook. I'm going to help eat it, though. Exactly. There it is. Well, I need you all to taste test it then. Let the viewers know. Let the viewers know. <laughs> Welcome to Jamie's Catch and Cook. Please help yourself. We have crappie fillets, potatoes. And y'all got to be honest now. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Breezy is mad over there. I know how to put it down, people. I'm serious. If you all want to help catch the fish, you're willing to help clean the fish, you're willing to help cook the fish, help can be 1% or 99%. Let's do it. Your house, my house. I don't care. I'll even travel. It's just a weekend. If it's worth it, I will travel. So, you all let me know. Let's get this done. It's not just crappy. It can be bluegill. Gar, both in. I don't care. Walleye. Walleyes. I just had it one time. I never caught a walleye. Somebody wants to get me on a walleye trip. Let's go. What you all thinking about that? That's good. Yeah? The fries are good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, if this was a southern, a true southern fish fry right here, people. In fact, I have it in the house. I didn't bring it out. We have onions. You eat your onion. You eat a pickle with your fish. And you always have some bread. Light bread. <laughs> it's crappy good, too. Yeah, shoot. Yeah, that crappy is good. Anyhow, gang. Everybody else has had fun. I'm hot. I'm sweaty. Been cooking. Slaving. Free, you ready to go swimming? It's time for me to go and get in here. So, um, till next time, you all take care. Have any comments, questions? Like the video, and I'm serious. You know, serious request. You wanna fish, catch some fish, cook some fish, try my recipes out. I love to cater your events. <laughs> we gotta work out those details. But, you know, just check out that. That's some nice golden fish. Just 11 fish. Jamie asked him.